This article is about three very important things that I think all the physicians and all the patients who deal with stone disease should keep in their mind. The article itself is kind of short, but the main points are caught in three pictures. If you are an idiopathic calcium stone former, which means that you have calcium stones without a systemic disease. The most important thing to begin with is the effect of sodium on calcium. This is a graph that I made from published data. The urine sodium is what you ate. The urine calcium is what you lose in the urine. These are normal people. The urine calcium goes up as they eat more sodium. These are stone formers. Look at the difference. The slope is higher. If you're a stone former, your urine calcium goes up much more as your sodium goes up. This is your diet sodium. The other side of that coin, as you drop your sodium, down to 100 milliequivalent a day, that's 2300 milligram, or the tolerable upper limit for the American people, you start to come into the normal range. If you get down to 50 or 60 milliequivalent, this would be 1500 milligram a day, you can begin to bring your urine calcium into the normal range. That's an extraordinarily valuable thing and something to shoot for. Now, let's move further down in the article. This is the amount of calcium that you eat. This is the amount of oxalate in the urine. The size of the dot is the amount of oxalate that was eaten by the subjects in these experiments performed by the various scientists whose last names I put here. The smallest was 50 milligram a day of oxalate. The biggest is 200. The middle one is 100. Whatever you're eating, as the diet calcium goes up, the urine oxalate goes down. You can see that. When you get to 1,000 or 1,200 milligram, which is what you should be eating for your bone health, it's very hard to find urine oxalates whose average is much above 35. So raising your diet calcium can lower your diet oxalate. And remember what I just showed you. Dropping your diet sodium will drop your urine calcium. If you combine the two, drop the sodium first, then raise the diet calcium, you can keep the urine calcium down and keep the oxalate down. A wonderful combination. I want to show you now how the calcium sodium manipulation can help bone. How diet sodium and calcium control bone mineral. There's only been one experiment like this. It concerned menopausal women whose bones are at great risk. Each woman ate one of each of these four diets, too high in calcium intake, that's plotted upward, too low in calcium intake. These are about uh, 500 milligram of calcium. These are about 1,200 milligram of calcium. The calcium intake's plotted upward. This is the urine calcium. It's plotted downward because it's what's being lost from the body. It's this bar. The urine calcium is much lower in the women who are eating the low cal lower calcium diet. You can see that. This is the high calcium diet. But when the high calcium diet is combined with the low salt diet, the urine calcium comes down 
in other words, less negative, and matches the urine calcium on the low calcium diet. So this is twice as much calcium, actually two and a half times as much calcium intake is here, but the urine calciums are the same. That's because the sodium here is about 1600 milligram, and the sodium here is about 4,400 4, milligram. This funny looking bar, it's a funny name, this is the amount of calcium taken out of the blood and secreted into the lumen of the bowel by the pancreas, by the liver, by the, the small but fall intestine. And as you lower the salt intake, that goes down too. See that? It's quite striking. And so uh, under these conditions, the retention of calcium, less loss in the urine, less loss by secretion, makes the bone mineral balance go from basically around zero, very positive. With the low calcium diets, it doesn't matter whether the diet sodium is high or low. You can't get your bone mineral into balance. So the trick of using low diet sodium, that's say 15, 1600 milligram, and high diet calcium, 1000, 1200 milligram, is good for bones as well as good for controlling urine calcium and urine oxalate. Of course, what you really want to know, was there ever a trial to see if the magic trick works for stones? And the answer is yes, there was one. Here's a trial by a professor named Borghi. Uh, it concerned men with calcium oxalate stones, and they were placed on two diets. The so-called low calcium diet was a diet with 400 milligram of calcium. Um, the high calcium was 1,200 milligram a day. That's, that's this one. He calls it normal because it is the correct diet intake for everybody. He said this is low protein, but it's actually a gram per kilo per day of protein, which is frankly what we all recommend for everybody. This was a normal sodium, which is about 4,000 milligram a day. And this was a low sodium he aimed at 1150 milligram, which is really low. These are the stones, and you can see the low, lower calcium, higher sodium diet had a lot more stones by the end of, of, of uh, five years. Now, these numbers here really tell what really happened. This is a, the lower calcium, the higher calcium diet, and this is one with the low salt. So you would expect, if these people are eating 1,200 milligram of calcium, there should be more calcium in their urine. So it's 5.9 mil equivalent. That you'd have to multiply that out by 40 to get the milligram. You see they're the same, right? In fact, the low calcium, the 400 milligram calcium diet, the urine calcium was a little tiny bit higher than the higher calcium diet. There's a three-fold difference now and diacalcium. It's all because of the sodium. The sodium intake here was 200 mil equivalents here, it's 123. That's still pretty high. 100 or 2300 milligram is a tolerable upper limit in America. So they didn't get the sodium that low. But look at how they got three times the calcium intake. And the urine calcium's the same. What changed was the oxalate. 400 micromole a day, 300 micromole a day. This would be roughly 43 or 44. This would be roughly 33 milligram. Because the oxalate was lower and the calcium was the same and the volumes were the same, the supersaturation for calcium oxalate was lower with the high calcium, low sodium diet. And the stones were much less. 20% recurrence versus 40% recurrence. That's a huge difference. So, does the low sodium, high calcium diet help to prevent stones? Yes.
Should it do so? Yes. It works for bones and it works for stones. Well, that's it. I've shown you the evidence. Now I'm scrolling through. How about diet oxalate? Well, if you've got that very high calcium intake, you want to avoid the highest oxalate foods, walnuts, spinach, rhubarb, parsley, chocolate, all this stuff. But you don't have to obsess over the diet list so much. Now the last part of the article says something really important about order. You want to lower the diet sodium first to keep the calcium in the body and out of the urine. And be sure you did it by getting a new 24-hour urine. Then you want to raise the diet calcium. And if you've done it right, the urine calcium should stay around 200 milligram per day. Sometimes you can't get the urine calcium down low enough even if the sodium is very low. And those are the people for whom you need thiazide diuretics. After you've done the lower sodium and the higher calcium, look at the urine oxalate. Is it high enough to worry about? In other words, above 25 or 30 milligram per day. If so, go to the food lists and reduce the food oxalate, starting with the worst foods and working on down. It's the last thing to worry about, never the first. Always check a repeat 24-hour urine after you've made any change or you're never going to know if you succeeded. If you have bone disease, these diet changes are good for you, but you need your doctor to take care of it. If you do not have bone disease, maybe it's because you've never had a bone mineral density. You probably should get one if you're a stone former. If it's normal, you're all set. But don't forget to get another one, maybe four or five years down the road. So there's a lot more to say about stone prevention, and I've listed a whole lot of it. Protein matter, sugars matter, potassium matters. That's all over this site. But the three-way magic spell is the big ticket. Lower the diet sodium, then raise the diet calcium, then consider diet oxalate. Keep your mind there. Stay on the main road, try the magic, and see how far you can get. Good luck.